Good evening. I hope everyone's doing well. Uh, we appreciate you taking a little bit of time uh, tonight to walk through JD Next, and we're excited to walk this material with you. We're going to wait another uh, another minute or so. Uh, we have a number of people who are logging on, so we'll try to give them as much time as we can before we initiate. So I'll just, if you everybody can hang tight for another minute or so, then we'll get started. So thank you once again. Uh, we appreciate you taking the time. Um, Jeannie, if you could advance the next slide, please. My name is Greg Chalk. I'll be your moderator for this evening. Uh, I am the head of marketing for Aspen Publishing and JD Next, and I'm thrilled to be joined by Dr. David Klieger. Um, Dave is the manager of testing and psychometrics uh, for JD Next. And between the two of us, we'll walk you through some information uh, specific to the JD Next program. Uh, we're thrilled that you register for, the, for our course. Um, we'll walk through, give you a little bit of an overview of the program, uh, and then walk into some more specifics uh, on the testing side of it. And then we'll finish with the Q&A. Uh, if you could advance the slide, please, Gina. So as I mentioned a moment ago, the webinar structure, we really tried to focus this um, with a heavy emphasis on offering tips and information and leaving a lot of time uh, to answer questions. So again, I'll go over a couple of slides just to give you some basic information about the course providing you login information, um, talking a little bit about some different, some fun things we have um, to, to share with you. Um, Dr. Klieger is gonna walk you through the examination, talking a little bit more about the program, uh, talk more, more about the score report, just to give you that background uh, as we kind of move forward with the, uh, the start of the course about to begin. And then a little bit of information about tips and recommendations. Uh, and then, as I said before, really trying to leave a lot of time for questions and answers. Um, there are a number of questions that were submitted ahead of time. We'll walk through all, each of those questions, uh, as well as opening it up, obviously, in the chat session for anybody to ask whatever they need. And then between uh, Dr. Klieger and myself, we'll provide you answers. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. So as I mentioned, we are thrilled uh, for our first 2024 cohort to be initiating in a little bit less than two weeks. Um, Monday, May 6th will be the start of that session. For those of you who are registered for that May 6th group, um, you will just be uh, aware that uh, we are finalizing the learning management system and you should be receiving an email at or around Friday, May 3rd. Um, so try and take a look for the latter part of next week. Um, with that information, with that email, it will provide you all the log information that you're needing. Um, a couple of quick things to, to keep in mind um, as I put on the bullet point, please be sure to add jd.next at aspenpublishing.com to your safe sender list uh, just to ensure that you're able to receive that email. And if for whatever reason, if you do not receive an email by the end of by the close of business on Friday with the login instructions, um, do one of two things or both things actually. If you can please check your spam folder. Um, there's a chance that uh, that the those email may have ended up there, uh, and then certainly contact us at that that email address or call the toll free number. We are certainly wanting to make sure that you have all the time you need to kind of log on, prepare, and uh, have a chance to kind of walk through the information before the course officially begins on the sixth. Next slide, please. We are thrilled uh, to be able to offer scholarships for JD Next. And as a reminder, um, it, it, for those of you who may have attended a previous webinar or just from the emails that we've uh, been sending out, uh, we have offered a number of two, $250 scholarships uh, per cohort. As you can see, the registration deadline unfortunately has passed for the May 6th course. That was Monday, April 15th. Um, you should, if you did, if you did apply for a scholarship, you should have received an email either in the affirmative um, providing you that you uh, you were a uh, scholarship recipient uh, or uh, an email uh, stating otherwise. Um, for those of you who are on the section who are looking to take the the June or the October cohort, we uh, the good news is we still have registration deadlines uh, coming up for that one. Um, with the most important date to keep in mind of Monday, May thirteenth, um, which is the date that you'll need to have all your uh, your applications submitted by uh, to be um, in consideration for the June third date. Uh, and then if you're looking for more information about that scholarship, just visit aspenpublishing.com slash JD Next, and there will be uh, some information uh, and a link for the, for you to submit your application. Next slide, please. We are thrilled, and a number of you, I'm sure, uh, who are on this call have already taken advantage of this. We are offering an online chat. We just thought it'd be a really good opportunity for you two to kind of get on the, uh, you know, get online, 
uh, be able to try and engage and interact with each other. Um, you can see the link right there, um, fairly straightforward, but we're also going to be sending this link as part of a follow-up email after this webinar, so don't uh, feel like you have to write this down. Um, we will be following it up with you, but we definitely encourage you to log on. Um, you know, the, the chat session has been open for a, a few weeks at this point in time, and it will close uh, the the day that the, uh, the course goes up on Monday, May 6th. So we just want an opportunity for each of you before the class starts to um, participate and communicate with each other, ask some questions, receive some guidance, and be able to kind of, you know, hopefully try to make some connections prior to the course beginning. Um, so if you haven't taken advantage of that, then please, uh, please do so before the, the class starts. Next slide, please. And as I mentioned, we're thrilled to have Dr. David Klieger on board. Um, David will be able to walk you through the JNEX examination. And with that, I turn it over to David. Thank you very much, Greg. If you could please turn to the next slide. So for uh, this uh, coming calendar year, we have three uh, different uh, session start dates. May 6th, June 3rd, and October 7th. And each of those start dates has two exam dates. So for the May 6th course, we have exam dates of July 9th and 13th. For the June 3rd course, we have exam dates of July 30th and August 3rd. And for the October 7th course, we have exam dates of December 4th and December 7th. And we will be announcing our uh, course and exam dates for the year 2025 shortly. If you could please advance to the next slide. So let me talk a little bit now about the structure and administration of the JD Next exam. The exam consists of multiple choice questions and one ungraded essay. There are uh, 60 graded questions on the uh, on the exam, and the essay is ungraded. The assessment is focused on 15 learning objectives that were learned or taught in the JD Next course. The exam is trying to uh, test the identification of key elements of case law so that you as a learner are prepared for tradi the traditional case law method that has been the foundation of legal education for more than 100 years. Exam results will range in terms of scores from 400 to 1,000. Individual success is based on how high an individual scores as a percentage of the total test takers. So your score is compared to that of your fellow test, test takers, and you receive a percentile score along with your score from 400 to 1,000. If you could advance to the next slide, please. In terms of test quality and fairness, there is peer-reviewed scientific research that shows the fairness, equity, and diversity that comes from the JD Next course and exam. Specifically, the research shows that use of the JD Next exam will reduce the size of the score gaps between racial and ethnic groups in admissions. In terms of the reliability of our JD Next final exam, the test and test scores are sufficiently reliable and valid. The exam produces consistent or reproducible scores, which come from the number of items and the quality of the test questions. And we use statistical indices, and we look at our prior studies to help calibrate that reliability of our final exam. If you could please turn to the next slide. In terms of the validity of the JD Next final exam, the test is continuously aligned to success within law schools with prior research studies demonstrating scientifically that law students who are exposed to the course in the test demonstrate higher law school grade point averages than those who do not take the course or the JD Next exam. The content of the test is aligned to the course, and it supports the measurement of its quantity and quality as evidenced by the intended interpretation of the test scores. And peer-reviewed and published scientific research shows 
both statistically and practically, that the test strongly predicts law school academic performance. If you could please turn to the next slide. So here is a graphic that shows the um, extent to which there are any score gaps uh, between racial and ethnic groups on the JD Next final exam. And here we have a comparison of JD Next, the JD Next final exam, to a standardized admission test. And what we see here is a, now the signs here for these numbers are negative, but the number overall is a, is a greater number for the standardized test than it is for the JD Next exam. So we see 0.79 versus 0.18. And that larger number expresses a larger size in the score gap that exists between and among racial and ethnic groups. So what we're seeing here in conclusion is that the score gaps for the JD Next exam, if they exist at all, are significantly smaller than what we see for standardized admission tests. If you could turn to the next slide, please. Students will be assigned an exam simulation about halfway through the course. All students will be required to complete the simulation to sit for the exam. The simulation makes sure that you are well situated for a successful testing experience, and that's why it is extremely important. Students will be provided a form to select schools, law schools, where their scores will be sent. If you could turn to the next slide, please. There are a number of uh, really uh, exciting and important features of the testing experience. First, there is a lockdown br browser that is used during test administration to block other applications to ensure that the exam is secure and to prevent cheating. The exam will support both Windows and Mac devices. Also, there's ID verification, which ensures that the test taker's identity is accurate, and it uses email, geolocation, SMS, and facial and voice recognition to maintain important security and reliability for the testing experience. Also, there is accessibility for the test, using the most modern HTML and CSS technologies with an absolute commitment to W3C's Web Accessibility Initiative and Section 508 guidelines. So those are really important standards for the testing experience, and the JD Next final exam uh, adopts those standards. If you could please turn to the next slide. Here is an example of a score report for JD Next. And I'll walk you through what is on this page. So at top of the page, in the top third of the page, you see some basic identifying information about you as a test taker. So just your identity, uh, your email, and so on. And then in the middle of this page, you see uh, two uh, circular-like boxes. And you see that there are two sets of scores being reported. On the left is a reporting of your score in comparison to those who took the JD Next final exam in December, in the fall, winter of last calendar year. And then on the right is your score with a comparison to a rolling three year average. And you might ask the question, well, why do we report uh, two different uh, sets of comparisons? It's because there are advantages to making a, compa a comparison to each of these two different comparison groups. Um, so on the left, we have a group that used the uh, test, the JD Next final exam for high stakes admissions. And so you can see what your scaled score is, which doesn't change regardless of the context, but also your percentile. So that percentile will tell you how you did versus other individuals who took the JD Next final exam in the fall winter for an admissions purpose. So for a high stakes purpose. On the right, you see again, your scaled score, but it, it compares you on the right to those 
who took the JD Nix final exam over the last three years. So it's a rolling three year average. And that has more information than does just the information on the left side, which is just for the fall and winter. But there are people who have taken in the past the JD Next final exam over the past three years who didn't take it just for an admissions purpose. Uh, so there are different pieces of information that are being provided to you. And what we generally say is that you should take an average between the two percentiles that you see on the report to give you a sense how you you stand against those who also uh, have taken and are likely to take the JD Next final exam in the future. Below in the lower third of the report are means and medians for these two different comparison groups. So we have um, the December fall winter group, and then we have the rolling three year average. And then we see here the actual number, which is really an estimate of what our, our best um, senses of what that mean or median or average is. And then on the right, we have what's called a 95% confidence interval. You know, as we know, sometimes our scores can vary each time we take a test for various reasons. And so we provide a confidence interval to capture that notion that sometimes people's test scores can vary from one test administration to another. But you can be pretty certain that the mean or median falls within that range that's listed under the 95% confidence interval. If you could please turn to the next slide. So Greg, um, I'm handing the baton to you. Thank you very much, David. That was great information. And as we get into the Q&A session, I'm sure if there's other questions you happen to have regarding the score or score reporting or the simulation or anything that Dr. Klieger has talked about, uh, we certainly can go over that in more detail. But thank you for those, those great information. Uh, next slide, please, Gina. So as we get ready, uh, or as you get ready for your course to begin, we just thought there were a couple of tips uh, we wanted to kind of pass along, along to everybody. Um, you, again, this could, this could certainly be a starting point for a discussion. That's really what the, the overall goal of this webinar is, is to really kind of initiate the discussion, kind of you're starting your, your head wrapped around the fact that the course will be beginning soon, and really trying to provide you the information so that you're as successful as possible, both in the course and just as importantly within the examination. So pursuant to that goal, um, the first tip we really want to try to offer to everyone is really try to follow the self-pacing recommendation of one hour per day. Again, the course is, you know, can be it's self-paced, as we mentioned, so it's, it's asynchronous. You will have uh, a course facilitator who is assigned to your particular cohort, so you will be able to ask that person questions uh, and so on and so forth. But the program is really meant to be um, self-paced and, and asynchronous. The question, the, the thing to kind of keep in mind within that is it's not your traditional college course and so that's something to kind of keep in mind um, from the perspective of you know the goal is not to kind of get through all the material in the course take the examination and, and then then you're done with it again truly the course has been set up to really be absorbed you know, you know little by little and really trying to have you retain that information and the benefit to that is you know the goal is to learn as much as you possibly can about the program about the subject material and then perform well on the examination and you're going to perform better on the examination by taking this material in dribs and drabs and little by little throughout the eight week program versus trying to crash it all at the end or to just do everything uh, within a couple of days of the week and then you know, then kind of let it go dormant for for, uh, for five or six days. So really try to as best you can, you know, certainly everybody's schedule is is, is what it is, um, but to the extent that you're able to try and, you know, log on every day or every couple of days and really try to move forward with the material, you'll find that's going to be far benef more beneficial uh, from an exam results uh, standpoint. So just kind of keep that in mind. Um, the other t uh, item we want to try and walk through is review and practice older material so you don't forget it. Again, that's kind of along those same lines. So as you're kind of, you know, this is like anything else, it's scaffolding. And as you're moving along within your course material, you'll learn more and more. You know, take the time to kind of go back to the first couple of weeks of the program, the first couple of modules, and really ensure that you're kind of retaining that information um, so that when you get to the very end of it, you're not having to struggle to kind of remember what you were doing, you know, a you know, month to six weeks pr uh, prior to that. So really try and do whatever you can to move the ball forward but also try to take, you know, take a look back whenever you can. Um, Dr. Klieger put this one down. He's, he's, he's absolutely right. Some of law school, as I'm sure you're, you're already aware, is memorization uh, and knowing how to apply what you learn. And this course is structured in much the exact same way. 
the goal of this course is to have you learn and think like a lawyer and the program and the material has been structured and set up in such a way. So really try and absorb yourself within the material, really try to, to realize there's memorization that's going to be involved and study habits that will be involved in. And the overall goal of this is to have you, you know, learn this information and be able to perform it uh, at your peak best for the examination itself. And then the last couple of quest, uh, points to put out there, law school does require you to show independence, um, but simultaneously just keep in mind that, that we are here to help and we, and we want to help you. Uh, again, the goal here is for everyone to, to post a thousand uh, score if you possibly can. So whenever you need help, please reach out to uh, your, your course facilitator. Um, they'll be able to kind of help guide you in the right direction, provide you the information that you're looking for. And then the last one kind of ties along with that. Asking questions is good. Um, this course material is not easy. It's, it's not meant to be easy. Um, it's meant to be a challenge. It's meant to, to really kind of have you really put together you know, what you know. And then once you do, do know this and do learn it, you'll perform better at the examination. So ask as many questions as possible. Um, learn as much as you possibly can, and you'll thrive in the examination. Next slide, please. We're excited and happy to announce uh, that we do we're offering a refer a friend program. So, you know, the overall thought process being, you know, we've heard from so many people saying this this examination, this program is great. You know, I'd, we'd love to learn more about it or we hadn't heard anything about it. So we're really trying to rely on each and every one of you to help us to really try and spread the word about the program. Um, and as such, we are offering an incentive. So for every friend that you refer who does sign up and complete the JD Next course, you'll earn an entry uh, to win a $250 Amazon gift card. And if you go to the next page, we can uh, talk a little more about how. So there, I get, there's a link, and again, this will be sent to you via email, so don't feel like you have to write it down. Um, but your overall goal is to, if you if you know a person, uh, please provide their name uh, and their email address. We'll reach out to that individual, uh, and then we'll all have, we'll have your information. I think we'll, we'll be tracking on the back end of it. Um, but again, anybody who's, who is able to submit a lead, we will ensure to track that. Um, you'll be entered to win that uh, that two hundred fifty dollar gift card. And we hope to, uh, to to really get as many new leads as possible, as many new students as possible, uh, who then can in turn try to help promote the program forward. So again, whether you know someone or not, any a little bit of promotion you can help us and any bit of awareness you can drive for this program will be hugely helpful for us. We've made us some strong inroads and we're, I'm amazed at how uh, far and how fast we've gone from an, an eight, you know over 25% of all the uh, of law schools in the US um, have actually applied for and received a variance from the ABA to utilize our examination. And that number is only going to grow um, within our first six months truly of, of existence in a high stakes environment. And so um, you know, the future is bright for us, but we do believe that um, with your help, we can make that even brighter and, and do, uh, do this and get to, to speed as quickly as possible. So please keep that in mind. Next slide, please. And so with this, uh, as we said before, we really want to try and leave as much time as possible for a QA. and a uh, There were a bunch of questions that were submitted, submitted in advance, um, so we're going to try to walk through those first. But if you can use the chat feature um, for any questions you happen to have, we'll start at the top and kind of work our way through each of the questions uh, and then get to them as many of them as possible. Um, this is the second session that we've run for registered students. Um, just as, as a, an FYI, we did run short on time before we got to answer all the questions the first time. Um, not a problem. We basically then answered all the questions offline, and as part of that email follow-up, we send all the answers. So every single question that is asked in this chat will be answered. Um, hopefully it's live on this session, but if it's not live, then we will make sure that that's part of the email follow-up that we'll be sending along. And with that, if you can go to the next slide, please, Gina. So again, here are some frequently asked questions. Um, David and I normally kind of go, usually these are David's questions, um, simply because he's he's the course expert. Um, I can chime in when possible, but we'll start with the top. And the first question is, when's the earliest date to take the examination and how much time it would take for my score to show up to the law schools? And I can actually answer that question. Um, as David mentioned earlier, the examinations uh, will vary depending upon the cohort. So if you're signed up for the May 6th cohort, your examination dates are the, the I mean, I exactly remember the exact date, uh, the last week of July and then the first week of August. We can, uh, can kind of refer back to that. Um, it takes typically about a four week time period uh, to turn around the score results and you'll receive those score results um, to let you know how you did on the examination. 
once you've received those score results, you can then advise us to let us know which law schools you would like to send the score report to. And then the schools themselves will receive the score report about 10 days later. So all in, you're talking about a three to five week time period from the point in time the examination is completed to the point in time where you see your results and then about 10 or so days afterwards, um, the law schools receive that. And by your way of example, we offer this examination in December of 2023. Those score results were, were sent to students on January 1st and then submitted to the law schools on January 10th. So it's giving you that general idea of time period. The next question, uh, and this will be for David, will the areas of the exam's multiple choice questions be all about contracts law and those nine topics in the objective list? Yes, the areas of the exam's multiple choice questions will be all about contracts law and, and those particular uh, nine topics in the objective list. And just to answer the next question, it is also true that the essay question will be about contracts law and those nine topics. Thanks, David. Uh, and the next question looks like that will be for you as well. My understanding is the six remaining topics will test our skills, but they will still be the questions about contract law on those nine topics on the objective list, right? So that's what we just uh, had just talked about. Uh, the next question, could you disclose some sample questions, multiple choice and essay? And David, that'd be for you. So we do have uh, sample questions uh, that can be uh, found, that is exam questions that it can be found while you're taking the course uh, to help prepare you for the final exam. And we are in the in the process of uh, working on uh, potentially releasing a few uh, questions, sample questions earlier so that even before you start the course, uh, you'll be able to see some of the uh, some of the content. Uh, but I will uh, say that it is very much like an exact uh, law school exam. So there are going to be questions. Uh, asking you about your knowledge and skill with respect to con those contracts law topics and those uh, additional um, additional six topics. Thanks, David. Uh, I can take the next question, which says, can JD Next exam be used as a substitute for the LSAT? Um, the, the answer is, is yes. Uh, and that goes back to what I mentioned a moment ago. Um, currently, there are 52 law schools who have applied for and been approved uh, from the American Bar Association to offer the JD Next examination in lieu of the LSAT or the GRE. So those for those 52 schools, and we can send you the link to those schools. It's on our website. Um, that can also be part of the follow up email that we're sending. Those 52 schools um, are do do have the opportunity to or they are approved from the ABA to offer JD Next in, uh, instead of the LSAT. In addition to that, um, the the JD Next examination certainly can be taken and submitted as part of the overall packet of the application packet, if you will. Uh, for schools that have not applied for variance, so you know, certainly the, um, the test score can be submitted even if the school has not been approved by the ABA for a variance. The one thing we do want to point out is just because the ABA has granted a variance for a particular school, that doesn't mean that the school is, is absolutely utilizing the JNX examination in lieu of the LSAT. So we strongly encourage you to reach out to each individual law school to see um, how each school is, is handling the JNX examination. The next question, um, how are the selected schools notified and how soon after the examination? And again, using that December example, um, the, the school report uh, went to students on January 1st and it was on January 10th that the schools were notified. So again, it's about, a, you know, call it a 10 week to four, 10 to 14 day time period. Um, the schools are all given a login uh, and then uh, then they'll be, they can then log into the information and each student who's requested that uh, their scores be sent to a particular law school, they'll be listed within the, uh, the, the, uh, the sheet, if you will, uh, or the, the web page uh, for that particular school. So the admissions folks will have the opportunity to view the examination results for each individual student um, that has submitted those results, but it is a login process for the school. Um, the next question says there's no real prep material out there for students who wish to go into this test with the best foot forward. What's the best way to prep for this course? And, and, and David, I can uh, turn this over to you to answer. In general, um, and this also goes to one of the questions of which I noticed in the chat, so getting a little bit of a, of a, of a sneak peek ahead off of that. Everything that you need within the course is self-contained. Um, there's no other material, so for, for, you know, for the money that you put down, um, to register for this course, that'll include your course, that'll include all testing material, uh, test preparation material, and it'll also include uh, there's no money that has to change hands uh, for you to submit your score report. There's an unlimited number of scores you can, or an unlimited number of schools you can submit your score to. So again, uh, we really want to try and make sure this was, was as fair and equitable as possible. Uh, so for that one price, uh, you are obtaining all of that. And David, I don't know if you want to try anything further to that from a test prep standpoint. 
Uh, that's absolutely correct. The JD Next uh, course and exam is a very different experience uh, than what you would have with other um, types of uh, admissions approaches uh, and, and admissions uh, testing. So the prep course is actually part of the overall JD Next package, and it's actually preparing you. It's it's designed to prepare you for that final exam. So you don't have to spend hundreds or thousands of dollars on additional books, um, on additional uh, courses to prepare for that final exam. It's all part of the price that you pay for that course and exam. That's great. Thank you, David, for that information. And I think with that, uh, Jean, if you could advance the next slide, please. So again, we'll uh, we'll open it up and we'll start going into the chat. Um, I wanted to provide, you know, kind of showcase this slide. So again, for further questions, uh, again, please feel free to check out our website. You, the URL is right there. Um, for further information that we're either not getting to or you want further clarification, um, please feel free to reach out uh, either via email or the toll free number. Um, so that information is there. And, and with that, I will open up the chat and we'll start to get asked, go through the questions. <clears throat> I'm just kind of going through. So uh, one of the questions, David, this one would be for you. Does anyone know what score is considered competitive? I've only seen people score in the mid 700s. So the competitive score will vary from law school to law school because each law school determines um, what scores it will accept um, in admissions. Um, and that's true of, you know, GRE scores, LSAT scores. So that will vary. Um, I, strongly recommend that anyone who wants to know what this expected score is or a law school they're interested in to actually contact the admissions office at that law school and talk to someone there uh, because the law school admissions offices are best positioned uh, to answer questions about the score, the scores that they will expect from their applicants. Thanks, David. And this the next question um, is a little bit of a takeoff on that. Uh, I'll ask the question and you may want to try to um, provide this answer as well. Do you have any statistics available with regard to the acceptance rates for prospective law students who have applied with, with exclusively JD Next in lieu of the LSAT or the GRE, um, as well as those scores used as supplemental material? Um, also, do you have any information pertaining to the median scores that have been accepted to schools accepting the JD Next in recent cohorts? So we are in the process of collecting those those data right now because the uh, first exams uh, for JD Next that were used for admissions were taken at the end of last calendar year. So we're talking about people who would be taking the JD Next exam for, for admissions uh, for this fall. And so uh, given the timing, we're still in the process of collecting those data and we will be reporting that out uh, when those data are available. Thank you. Uh, next question I can handle. Uh, this is from Derek. Is this can someone dedicate more than an hour if they have the time? The answer is certainly yes, Derek. Uh, again, and that, that one hour is really kind of put um, put up as just, just a you know a general guideline. Um, some students may have a little bit more time. Some may be a little bit less. Some uh, really just want to try and dig further into the material, and, and and that's great too. So you know, again, we really try to to, to structure in such a way to where if you're doing you know on average one hour per week, um, I mean, perhaps maybe a little bit more on the weekends if you if, if you had to do a little bit less during the week, um, that equates to that, you know, that six to eight hour time period per week. Um, but by all means, if you want to try and dedicate more time, please do so. Uh, the material is there and, and there's, there's a lot to study and a lot to learn. Um, the next question, David, would be for you. It says, how do schools view JD Next scores in comparison to LSAT scores? Well, that's going to vary from uh, institution to institution. Um, some law schools are very happy to take JD Next scores in lieu of LSAT scores and GRE scores. There are going to be law schools that will be happy to look at a JD Next score in addition to an LSAT score or a GRE score. Uh, and yes, there will be law schools that will uh, prefer scores from the other tests. It's going to vary from school to school. Um, as I said before, um, the individual law schools, you know, they make their own policies uh, on their admissions process and what uh, they prefer and what exam scores they'll take. So I strongly encourage uh, everyone to reach out to those law schools they're interested in applying to and speaking with someone uh, to talk about 
that law schools uh, policies and, and preferences. And I think uh, that would be uh, that would be your ideal approach. Thanks, David. I can uh, take the next question. It says, when do we gain individual login information? Um, is the learning management email separate from the one being sent on May 3rd? Uh, the short answer is, uh, again, everything will be sent on that right on or around that May 3rd date. Um, that login information um, will give you, again, your own unique login to the course um, and the learning management system. That, that's what that's what the login uh, will get you to. So the learning management system just is just the the platform that you'll be accessing once you receive that login. So as a reminder, try and take a look for at the end of the latter part of next week. Um, if you do get to the end of day next Friday the third and you have not received an email, please check your spam folder. Um, and if you don't find anything there, then by all means, please reach out to the toll free number uh, and or the email address that you see on your screen and we will ensure that you're able to get your login squared away. Uh, the next piece of that question is the lockdown browser encompassed within edtest.ai. Can we install them early? And David, that's probably more of a question for you to answer. Um, so that and so that is uh, done. That work is done in tandem with uh, individuals who will uh, be working with you. Um, so uh, there is going to be that uh, point in time halfway through the course uh, when um, there's basically going to be um, a test to see that you're set up uh, for uh, the actual uh, test administration. It's, it's at that point you would have that that kind of conversation, but uh, it's so far not been policy to set that up um, at a significantly earlier time point for a particular test taker. But if you do have specific uh, technological needs or concerns, you should reach out to us and, you know, we'll discuss with you um, any, you know, any, you know, particular uh, earlier installation that that might make sense. So we're, we're certainly open to talking about it in general. You know, people have had all, all that installed at around the same point in time. Thank you, David. The next question uh, is, can a test taker, and I can answer this one, can a test taker choose to send test scores to schools that have not been granted an ABA variant? The answer is certainly, uh, definitely yes. Uh, and again, to, to kind of walk through that process, um, you'll be taking your examination, you'll receive your score results. You can wait until you get your score results and then determine which law schools uh, you want to receive your test scores. Again, there's an unlimited number um, that you can send those to. So a lot of students, uh, you know, some may try and let us know early. Um, others may want to try and wait until they get their, they get their actual test scores. But um, again, if the school has not been granted an ABA variant, um, a number of students are submitting the JD Next test score just as an overall enhancement to their overall application um, and kind of showing exactly how they've done the program. The benefit too, and we didn't talk about it uh, on this webinar, but if you've you know, been, been looking at our material um, or have attended the webinar for, for prospective students, um, again, just a reminder that the eight week course itself has uh, results, it's been scientifically proven um, that you're going to increase your GPA by 0.2. Uh, so from a 3.3 .3 to a 3.5. Um, so just in general, there's certainly value in the course um, and the, the, there's absolutely value in the course and submitting your test score uh, to a non-ABA school. And I keep going down. Um, the next question uh, is, uh, David, I can uh, pass this off to you. How does it work for retaking the test? Is there an option to retake? Is there a cancellation option if you think you might be able to do better and sign up for another session? Actually, I, I can answer this one for you, uh, Anika. So um, for the program, the program itself includes um, the eight week course, one examination, and then an unlimited number of, of um, school, schools uh, you can send your score results to. Uh, you certainly have the opportunity to take the test again. Um, you just need to sign up for one of the additional cohorts um, and then you'll be able to take the examination with that particular cohort. Um, David, this next one is score reporting, so it definitely would be for you. Uh, this is regarding score reporting. The chart you shared reflects scores of 800, but the graph below shows 760 to 780 scores. I presume weighted scores, but which scores reported? As an example, would it be the 800? So what gets reported is both your uh, scaled score, which falls between 400 and 1,000, as well as your percentile. So how you uh, fared, how you scored um, in comparison to others who have taken the uh, JD Next final exam. So there are two pieces of info, the two pieces of information that that get reported. Actually, it's three because we have two different percentiles. So there are three different pieces of information that that do get reported. 
Thank you for that, David. Uh, the next question will be for you as well. Um, when you say contracts law, will the whole program be specifically focused on that area? Kindly elaborate. So the course is focused on contracts law because the purpose of JD Next is to teach underlying transferable skills that you can use throughout your law school experience and then also as as an attorney. Um, but to teach those underlying skills, those skills have to be taught within a particular context. There has to be essentially a curriculum into which uh, those those skill building exercises are constructed. And so we chose what is a core uh, contracts law class that every law student, every JD next, every JD student takes in law school. Contracts law, it could have been torts, it could have been civil procedure, but we chose contracts law. It seemed uh, to be uh, a, a popular choice at the time the decision was being made. And um, yes, uh, we're 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 teaching those underlying skills within um, a contracts law class without bouncing around into different subject areas. This gives you, I think, a more genuine, realistic sense of what it's like to be in law school, because in a law school class, you aren't jumping around. You are actually focused on a particular subject area. And so that JD Next simulates that, it also sticks to one subject area, in this case, contracts law. That's a great answer, David. Thank you. The next question is from Derek. It says, uh, are there more schools that are in the process of the 503 variants? And and for everyone's benefit, um, the 503 variants, that basically is um, the variants that the ABA would grant to a law school to offer the JD Next examination in lieu of the LSAT or the GRE. The short answer is we believe the answer is certainly yes. Um, again, not strong enough to speak for the ABA. Um, there were five schools that just were recently um, approved for a variant within the last six weeks or so ago. Um, so we went from 47 to 52, and, and that number is, is, uh, has been dramatically increasing um, over the last six months. So uh, just strong indications that there are a number of schools that we are in contact with that we have heard that they're in the process of applying for or have, have already applied for a variant. So um, you will see this number continue to grow. Um, but again, that's that's certainly um, that's more of an ABA uh, thing versus um, any information that we've been given specifically. The next question is from Kyle. Um, this is one to definitely to, to, to talk a little further on. Many approved schools are not accepting uh, JD Next in lieu of the LSAT. Do you have a list of those that are accepting for 2024 enrollment? So two, uh, twofold off of that. Um, the first piece of this is that that's what we definitely strongly encourage you. Um, just because a school has been approved for variants from the ABA um, doesn't mean that they are allowing that they are taking J next in, in lieu of the LSAT. In some cases, um, they just want to, they want to try to get, the, get their internal system squared away. And uh, so they're more prepared and more ready to be able to utilize that. So they've, they've gotten the variants and they're in you know, the various processes uh, or various stages of the process. Uh, being able to actually have it uh, kind of stand uh, shoulder to shoulder um, with their existing existing examinations, such as the LSAT and the GRE. Um, so that's certainly something which you will see evolve uh, and you know, improve upon, if you will, um, as we move forward with, uh, with this program. Next important uh, piece of that question, do you have a list of those schools that are accepting for 2024 enrollment? We can try to put together a list for you. Um, again, the challenge is that each school, there are various stages. So um, in many ways, we're hesitant to put some information out there um, for fear that people think that, that each school is the exact same uh, space. Some will, will absolutely utilize it right alongside the LSAT. Other schools will utilize it, um, but they, they still will, will, will prefer that you to have the LSAT. And others uh, have applied for variants, but they're not, are not ready to use it as of yet. So we certainly will try to provide more information moving forward uh, to provide more context to that. Um, right now, I think the safest uh, the safest bet for each of you on this call is if there's a particular law school that you're interested in applying to, um, then we just strongly encourage you to reach out directly to that school and they can give you a, a much more detailed answer as far as how that school individually um, is accepting or and or utilizing the JNX program. Next question is from Stacy, and I can uh, take this one as well, David. Is there a max number of schools you can request to send your scores to? And the answer is no. Uh, you have an unlimited number of schools that you can send your scores to. Uh, and again, it, it, there's no additional cost. So all for the uh, your that $299 price point, um, that will include score reporting, sending to as many schools as you would like them sent to. The next question is from Jay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Is there assistance to get a non-ABA variant school to accept JD Next score? 
um, again, that's something we, again we encourage you. We, we are um, it's, it's a good part of David's job. Um, he's working very closely with these various law schools, having conversations. Um, you know, our entire team is um, trying to work you know through these with these different schools um, on their acceptance and usage uh, and, and knowledge of the JNX program. Um, so yes, yeah, so we are and you're kind of behind the scenes, or if you will, uh, separately are working directly with these law schools um, to try to get them to accept the score and to utilize our program more. Next question is from Mercedes, uh, and David, I can uh, pass this off to you. What if I don't like my score? What are the options at that point? If you uh, are unhappy with your score, um, we um, encourage you to you know try again. So uh, we do um, mm -hmm. offer multiple courses throughout the year. Um, you are not required, uh, you know, in a second try to necessarily go through um, every part of the material like you did uh, through your first experience with JD Next, although we would recommend it since um, practice is probably the most likely way to improve performance on the final exam. And you could sign up for a subsequent uh, course and a subsequent exam and uh, we do know from learning theory that uh, practice is what makes people um, more proficient uh, in in test taking. So that would be, uh, I think, the best option uh, if you were unhappy with your score. Thanks, David. The next question is from Carolyn. Um, if the test, if the final test is in August for the May cohort, is it feasible to use JD Next for applying for the 2024 fall semester? It will be too late at that point. Um, the answer to that is again, it will vary by law school. Um, you have a certain number of law schools. I think it's don't quote me the exact number. Um, 10%, 10 to 20% uh, that are rolling admissions. And then for those schools that do have rolling admissions, then certainly um, you know. The, the score would um, would work for that time period. But again, we would encourage you to reach out to a, a teach particular school. Um, many schools do have application deadlines, um, and in many cases that deadline will have already passed um, by August for uh, for a fall admit. Um, so again, depending upon what your, your thought process is, um, certainly you know taking the examination in May or taking the course in May, um, that could lead to, um, you know, to, to a 2025 admit um, or what works for your own personal situation. Uh, David, the next question uh, I believe is for you is from Walker. Um, well, it's more of a statement slash question. Uh, if, if you do not like your test score, can you retake? If you do not like your score, can, you can retake the course exam and the average your scores. And if you want to kind of clarify what taking the, the, the test multiple times truly means. So we do generally, we, we do report, not generally, we, we report all your scores um, that you have up to the date when you request your scores to be sent uh, to a law school. Um, most law schools traditionally have taken for admissions tests your highest score. Um, that's a policy that the law school sets. Um, and as we've said before, we strongly encourage you to reach out to a law school to understand what its admissions policies are. Uh, but if you don't like your uh, initial score, then we would strongly encourage you to uh, re-experience a JD Next to sign up for a subsequent course and a subsequent exam and uh, you know practice further. Again, um, learning theory shows that by further practice, you will uh, generally improve how you will do on a subsequent exam. And as I've said, it is the it has historically been the policy of most law schools to look at your highest score. But again, you would have to verify um, at a law school of interest, specifically what that law school's policies are. Thank you, David. Uh, next question is from Chris. This is a very easy one I can answer. Uh, will this presentation be available to review later? The answer is definitely yes. Uh, we are recording the session, um, and then we will send the link to everyone along with um, some of the other information we've talked about being part of that that follow-up email. So yeah, you will absolutely receive um, the recording and this information for, uh, for you to utilize going forward. Next question. Um, it's a little bit of a longer question, but but I think and that's the the gist of it um, is just trying to learn more about the uh, the the cadence of score reporting. Um, so I'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, each student has the opportunity to provide the list of schools that they want to try and have their score submitted to. The schools themselves will be given a login, and then they'll receive an, an email every time a student has scores is available for that particular school. So uh, the, this question is asking if, if you're adding a school late, 
um, then as soon as that school has been added, as soon as that score is released, then that individual will receive a notification. So, you know, point being is um, if David were the admissions pro professional, he'd be receiving multiple emails um, each time a student has requested uh, the, the JNX score to be sent uh, to that particular school. And then David could then log in with, with his, uh, his personal login credentials and then be able to view that information. So it, it is an ongoing communication process that JD Next is having with each of these law schools to ensure that the information is being reviewed. Um, and then certainly uh, David, along with other people on our team, uh, you know, certainly are, are in contact and communication with the, which of these schools um, if there's any questions or further follow-up uh, based off the questions these schools may have. Um, next question is from uh, tomorrow. I paid for the May course, but I didn't know there was a scholarship application. If I apply and get accepted for a scholarship for the June class, can I get refunded for the May course? The answer is yes. Well, um, the answer is you have up until one week after the start of the course, which is May 13th. Um, to be able to uh, get to be able to, uh, to get your money back. But if you do apply for a scholarship, then certainly we, we would uh, be able to refund your money and be able to kind of work something out uh, from that perspective. But do try to keep the deadline dates in mind. Um, so you, you are able to drop the course up to one week after the course begins. Um, and that happens to coincide with the application deadline date for the June course. Uh, next question says, does JD Next help prepare you for the LSAT prep and studying? Um, the answer to that is, is, is no. I mean, the JD Next course uh, is really kind of self-contained. Um, again, our material is specific to um, the contracts um, material that, that, that David has talked about. Um, the eight-week course really is, is, is self-contained and gears towards uh, the JD Next examination. And that really is what the uh, um, information is for. In general, as I said before, um, is great legal education material. Um, it's been proven to raise GPA. So again, if you're looking to succeed in law school or to, to do overall, to do a better job overall um, with your with your admission scores, and certainly uh, the information is, is valuable from that perspective. But it's, it's not geared in any way towards any other examination, but J next examination. Um, but it's great content, which which will help you in your legal journey uh, going forward. Um, next question, David, would be for you. Um, law schools are known for utilizing the Socratic method of teaching. Being this course is asynchronous, how do you prepare course participants of that element of law school? Great question. So there are elements embedded in the course which do help uh, prepare you for a, a Socratic uh, experience. It's a balance because we want the course uh, to be uh, convenient and flexible. Um, because we know that a lot of individuals uh, have uh, particular scheduling needs. So it is important that we we retain that flexibility. Um, so it isn't going to be exactly you're showing up in in class, um, you know, synchro uh, synchronous time with with other students, but we do build within the course the teaching of those skills which will make you successful in a classroom where the Socratic method is used. That was deliberately built in to the course. So we do try to, at on one hand, provide you with the skill sets needed to be successful with the Socratic method. On the other hand, we're also trying to provide the flexibility that students uh, need in terms of their own um, scheduling uh, requirements. So I, I think it's a really uh, great balance between those two. Thank you, David, for that. Um, next question is from Benjamin. Uh, if you've already taken the LSAT, will the school factor both uh, your LSAT score and the JD Next score, or is it up to the individual school? And, and I know we've said this a few times, um, but it really is up to each individual school. So we, we just don't want to give uniform or blanket information uh, and have that be inaccurate uh, from one school to the next. So again, you know, our recommendation if you have taken the LSAT, um, the, the overall application uh, package, if you will, you're putting together, which could you know, be inclusive of the LSAT as well as JD Next is a, and the essay that you'll be completing uh, for the JD Next program. Um, it's a strong package. Um, how each school utilizes that package or what they focus on, that definitely is a question for each individual school. Uh, and David, the next question is from Joshua, which would be for you. Um, lockdown question is the test taking monitored after identification verif after identified verification. The LSAT uses facial constantly. Is it the same? So we um, we don't use the uh, exact same um, 
vendor process that LSAC uses. We use uh, processes that uh, we know have been demonstrated to maintain uh, security and test integrity as well as the validity uh, of the test. And I can't share too many uh, details uh, for uh, reasons of, of security, but I will say that there is uh, there is a a, a, pro a a proctoring that is done uh, for a kind of proctoring that is done for the the exam uh, to maintain that security. Um, otherwise, you know, we we couldn't um, we couldn't provide a high stakes assessment. Thank you. Uh, just a couple more questions, and as I mentioned earlier, uh, whatever questions we do not get the chance to get to, we will go through uh, and answer and send in a follow up email. Um, so rest assured that if you have a question that uh, you will receive a reply from us on that. Um, so a couple more questions uh, while we have a couple more minutes uh, from Jonathan. What is the process to have uh, testing accommodations? Um, great question and, and there is a section uh fully separate on our website um with all of our with all of our uh, accommodation information there is an application that you can go through and, that, and that's uh, kind of handled by a third party so by all means um we are happy to provide it and more information if you're looking for it um, but otherwise just kind of go onto the website and it should kind of walk you through um the accommodations and the options and then the application process um so good luck with that um next question is from Brianna. Brianna. Uh, David, this one will be for you. What types of assignments should we expect throughout the course? How much reading is expected? Are there quizzes or written assignments? So there are written assignments. Uh, there are uh, quizzes throughout. Um, it is a balance uh, like uh, I mentioned earlier. It's a balance between wanting you to appreciate the rigor of law school because uh, part of what JD Next is trying to do is to give you a preview of what law school is going to be like. And if you're going to be prepared for that final uh, exam and be prepared for law school, um, there have to be um, you know, a certain uh, extent of demands you know, placed on your time so that you can learn the material and you can learn those underlying skills. At the same time, it's not what we would consider to be uh, anything unreasonable because again, we, we're trying to build a course that prepares you, but which also is flexible uh, because we know that uh, people have busy schedules. And as I said, that's the reason why it's an, an asynchronous uh, design. Uh, so it is a it is a balance. So it's just a, a, the right amount so that you're well prepared. But it's not uh, it's not to the extent uh, where it's unduly burdensome, uh, given that, uh, you know, you all have have uh, other. Other priorities as well as as this course. Thank you. And and based on the time, I think we'll uh, go with one last question. Uh, and as I said, we'll fo certainly follow up um, with everything we were not able to get to. Um, the last question belongs to Troy. And Troy says, uh, I received an email with the course syllabus and have been researching the cases uh, accordingly prior to the May 6th course. Um, David, this one will be for you. Do you suggest that I keep reviewing these materials or should I just wait until the course begins on the 6th? Well, we know that uh, Students have been or participants have been very well prepared for the final exam and for uh, law school uh, by simply uh, starting uh, their studies uh, when the course begins. That isn't to say we are dissuading anybody from trying to prepare earlier. That's certainly an individual decision, but it is it is not necessary. Uh, and individuals are very well prepared who who begin the course on the on the start date. Um, so I, 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 again, I would encourage you to do what uh, you, you think is best for you. But uh, again, there's no requirement uh, that uh, you start sooner than the start date. Thank you. And with that, I would like to certainly on behalf of Dr. Klieger and myself, um, we'd like to thank you for taking uh, this hour to kind of walk through all the materials. As, as you can tell, we're, we're, we're both really excited. Um, you know, we think we're excited for you. We're excited for this program um, and we think that uh, it's, it's going to be great and we're really looking forward to having each of you. So thank you so much for taking the time. Um, as we mentioned before, if there's any further questions you happen to have that we did not get to, um, you know, you, there's the toll free number. There is the uh, the email address. Please reach out to us. We, we certainly want to hear from you. Um, and otherwise, we wish you the best of luck as you begin this course. We wish you the best of luck and having a great rest of the day and rest of the week. 
and uh, please feel free to reach out to us and we'll have more information to come. As I said, there will be uh, the follow up email and wishing everybody good luck once more as we uh, get ready to take the course. Thank you, everyone. Everyone have a great evening.